Today it was Thomas's turn to do brake van rides. He didn't mind, but he was missing Annie and Clarabel a lot. Up and down he puffed all day long, giving visitors lots of rides. Children wanted photos of themselves inside Thomas's cab, and some mums and dads did too. Thomas's driver and fireman hands ached after signing visitors' reasonably priced autograph books all day long. Then Thomas noticed a little boy holding his ears. He seemed frightened at the sounds. Thomas then asked his driver why the little boy looked so nervous, then asked the little boy's mum, who then explained her son had autism. But he was a big fan of Thomas all his life, but he felt very overwhelmed by Thomas's sheer size and the loud noises he made. Thomas's crew made a plan for later that afternoon. Once all the visitors had left, Thomas was ready to go back into the exhibition hall when he noticed the little boy and his mum walking towards them. Then his driver explained his plan. They were going to do something called a relaxed experience, where there was no big crowds, the music was turned down, and Thomas promised not to wish steam and blow his whistle loudly. Eventually the boy came over, and the guard let him wave the green flag, and quietly Thomas moved away with his brake band. Once they returned to the station, the driver invited the boy and his mum onto the footplate and even let the little boy blow Thomas's whistle so he wouldn't be afraid of the sound as he knew where it was coming from. The little boy and his mum thanked the driver, fireman and guard and Thomas and got them to sign copies of his favourite railway series book. And the fireman gave the little boy a lump of Thomas's coal to take home with him but he recommended giving it a coat of varnish as the dust would get everywhere otherwise. That evening, Thomas backed into the exhibition hall with a great big smile on his face. The other engines asked why, and Thomas explained to them about the little boy and his mum.